Now I've basically explained everything that I plan to explain about entropy. However, I'd like to conclude by tying up a few loose ends. The first is the way entropy and the direction of spontaneity works in chemistry. Entropy is the tendency of anything to spread out over time, matter and energy. In chemical thermodynamics, we use a slightly different convention for deciding what is a spontaneous direction. We'll see that it logically is the same thing as saying that entropy of the universe increases. In chemistry, they divide things up in terms of the system and the surroundings, and they look at that in the combination of two different state functions, the enthalpy and the entropy. And these are of the state of the system. So the enthalpy of the system is basically tied to the heat transfer to a surroundings in a constant pressure process. In a constant pressure process, the enthalpy change of a reaction is equal to the heat absorbed in the reaction occurring. And then they say that the spontaneous direction is by lowering the Gibbs free energy. Okay, the change in the Gibbs free energy is shown as the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. Here we're talking about the configurational entropy of the system. And the criterion for spontaneity is that the Gibbs free energy has to decrease. Well, how is this the same as saying that entropy of the universe increases? Let me show you. This is equivalent if you multiply both sides of the equation by the temperature. Delta S minus delta H over T has to be greater than zero. Delta S is the entropy change of the system, minus delta H over T is the heat transferred from the system to the surroundings. So it's the heat absorbed by the surroundings. So minus delta H is the heat absorbed by the surroundings. Minus delta H over T is the entropy change of the surroundings. If delta S is positive, that means that the system's entropy is increasing. If minus delta H over T is positive, that means that the entropy of the surroundings is increasing. So you add those together, the delta S minus delta H over T, that is the entropy change of the universe in any chemical process. So this is to say that if the Gibbs free energy of the system is decreasing in a constant pressure process, then the entropy of the universe is increasing. It's just a way of breaking things down so that we look at the system only and not have to worry about explicitly talking about the surroundings. I'd also like to mention a particularly specious and pernicious misuse of the second law of thermodynamics to try to disprove the idea of evolution. The argument goes something like this. Entropy always increases. The evolution of life from simple life forms to ever more complicated life forms is inconsistent with the idea of disorder increasing because that's order and quality increasing as opposed to quality decreasing. Well, that's all fine, except they're missing a rather important consideration, which is the direction of energy flow. The temperature of the surface of the sun is about 6,000 Kelvin. The temperature of the surface of the earth is about 300 Kelvin. The temperature of the universe is about three Kelvin. That's the cosmic microwave background temperature. The sun is constantly losing entropy as time goes on, as it's losing heat. The heat that it's losing is minus Q over T. A very small portion of the energy lost by the sun is absorbed by the surface of the earth. The entropy change of the earth is going to be that increase in heat divided by the temperature of the earth. Now we'll see since the sun is some 20 times in an absolute sense hotter than the earth, the same energy transfer is going to cause an increase in the entropy of the earth, a factor of 20 more than the decrease of entropy of the sun. So that's definitely a spontaneous process for energy from the sun to be transferred to the earth. And so we can look at this in terms of how much energy is transferred per square meter of the Earth's surface. And on average, in a year, there's about eight gigajoules of heat per square meter of the Earth's surface that is received from the sun. The entropy loss of the sun there is about 1.3 megajoules per Kelvin. The Earth, since its temperature stays about the same, uh, is just transferring entropy through and the entropy increase in the universe as it's receiving that heat from the Earth is about 2700 megajoules per Kelvin per every square meter of the Earth's surface. There's plenty of room. The Earth's entropy can decrease a whole bunch and the entropy of the universe is still going to increase. There's plenty of opportunity for order to occur on the Earth because disorder is happening in the universe. Evolution is not at all inconsistent with the second law of thermodynamics.
I'd like to conclude with just a little philosophical comment on what the second law of thermodynamics is telling us. It's often interpreted as a rather pessimistic way, saying that energy is always degrading from useful forms to less useful forms, and order goes to disorder. And so we use that to think about the decay of any ordered system, the fall of any civilization, things like that. But that's not really what the second law of thermodynamics is telling us. What the second law of thermodynamics is telling us is why things go the way they do. In other words, how we can have a difference from the past to the future. How, in fact, we can predict what's going to happen. How we can know what will happen with any sort of process. Increasing entropy is how we know something will happen. 